Forget about Christopher Nolan. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and a few years ago I saw a wonderfully original, very creative and just damn entertaining Japanese horror comedy titled One Cut of the Dead. A film that was produced on a shoestring budget and that did a super fresh take on the zombie genre. In many regards, Beyond the Infinite Two Minutes or Droste no Hate de Bokura feels like a spiritual successor. This little science fiction comedy is another testament to what you can achieve and what kind of film you can realize with very limited resources when you have a great idea for a story, a fresh concept and of course talented, passionate people in front and behind the camera. I just saw it at the Slash Film Festival here in Vienna and I think it should get a home release in the next month. With just 70 minutes of runtime, it doesn't waste a second, but immediately goes into its strange premise. After the small cafe owner Kato is done working, he goes upstairs to call it a day. But then he suddenly sees himself on his computer screen. Himself still being downstairs in the cafe in front of the TV. Or rather, being downstairs again. Because this Kato, who talks to our Kato, is Kato from the future. Exactly two minutes from the future, to be precise. And so the madness begins. The premise of Beyond the Infinite Two Minutes is that these two monitors, the one in the cafe and the one in the room upstairs, are somehow connected but two minutes apart. In the room you can see two minutes into the future and in the cafe you can see two minutes into the past. The film was written by Makoto Ueda, who is also the founder of the theater group Europe Kikaku, to which director Yunta Yamaguchi as well as most of the actors belong as well. It marks the directorial debut of Yunta Yamaguchi, who also did the cinematography and editing. Which makes a lot of sense, because this is one of those so-called one-take movies. Meaning that pretty much the entire film is unfolding before our eyes as one long continuous shot. Which is also a big reason why it reminded me of One Cut of the Dead, which did this for a huge stretch of its runtime as well. Of course it can be assumed that there are several hidden cuts throughout, but it's nevertheless a really impressive technical achievement and also one that adds a lot to the charm and atmosphere of the film. It adds to the feeling as if we are watching something unfold live in front of our eyes and paired with the very limited locations and of course this peculiar sort of time travel narrative, it gives the film a very unique flavor. It's a science fiction movie that doesn't need big effects or action set pieces, or even a lot of different sets. Yet it's very impressive and quite immersive if you don't mind the cheap look of it. And if you know at least a little bit about filmmaking, you can't help but applaud them for pulling this off and you wonder how they did it. Such long takes are always super difficult to plan, stage and direct, but combined with the whole time travel aspect, it becomes pretty mind boggling. During the end credits we get a glimpse of the making of it and I honestly wouldn't mind to watch a small documentary about the process, because it looks so fun in its own right. But back to the beginning. For a long stretch of time, to make us acquainted with this crazy idea, it's just our protagonists going up and down between the two monitors and constantly talking to themselves or rather their future and past selves. But not only does this repetition doesn't really get stale, but there's rather a beautiful quirkiness to it all, which also stems from the super enthusiastic characters and cast, and here it surely helps that the actors have a lot of history and work together for many years. There's something stage-like about the movie for sure, because of the way it is unfolding, but also because of the rather theatrical or overacting style of performing, which I honestly had a lot of fun with. The way our characters talk, and maybe even more so how they pose and react, it's quite hilarious and in lack of a better term it comes across as very Japanese. Another source of entertainment in movies like this lies in the attempt to make head or tails of what is going on exactly. In that regard it reminded me of another low budget time travel movie, Primer. Only that this is the comedic and much faster paced version. I guess at some point, which is probably at a different time for everybody, you kind of can't keep up anymore with all the strange little time travel developments and how it all makes sense, but the movie is fun and charming enough to just go with the flow. Overall, it's just a very charming and original film that for me only doesn't get elevated more because it doesn't really resonate on an emotional level or get any deeper with its time travel concept. 
There is a little romance plot going on, but not enough to make our protagonist Kato really become someone we want to cheer for. The characters are all a lot of fun, but you don't feel the stakes all that much and the movie deliberately stays on this rather superficial fun level. Which is fun for sure, but I think they could have done more to let us root for the characters or pose even more questions about the consequences of this time travel device. So in German I'd say, Beyond the Infinite Two Minutes ist eine wirklich wundervoll kreative und überaus beeindruckende Low-Budget Zeitreise-Komödie, die mit ihren begrenzten Mitteln einen herrlich quirligen Mindfuck abliefert. I give Beyond the Infinite Two Minutes 7 out of 10. It's more like 7.1, but I don't do that. Alright, that's it like always. Comment below and let me know what you think about Beyond the Infinite Two Minutes. You can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Letterboxd and also on Patreon simply at the Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell. Mm -hmm.